What is up, humans on the card board? Welcome back to Just Us, guys. Today, we're doing a slightly different video, as you can tell from the format, slightly different. Today, we are talking about the five most exciting decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, for the future. So pretty much what I'm talking about here is stuff that we either know is getting support or stuff that uh, we know is like coming out, like the whole new archetype or something is coming out. And I'm just really excited to play these decks. These are the five decks that I am most excited, looking forward to, to get my hands on and actually be able to build and test and play and all of that stuff that goes into it. So obviously, this is an opinion-based video, guys. Feel free to throw me your opinions down in the comment section down below because I'm actually really curious uh, what kind of decks you guys look forward to. Um, so definitely let me know in the comment section down below what your fi top five favorite decks or decks that you're looking forward to building the most uh, as far as like the, the horizon, what we know about is coming in the game. Number five, no honorable mentions, nothing. <laughs> Flunderies. <laughs> Listen, guys, don't kill me. Don't hate me for this. Uh, listen, I got the got the rise. I got the Spanish uh, rise of the Mega Monarch. Um, it's a really cool deck. Um, I'm actually really excited for it. It's, it's more my style. It's obviously control based more than anything. It even has some stun aspects to it. Um, but it also has like weird little combo aspects to it. So it's a really, really cool strategy. And I think it's more, a lot of people are just calling it like a monkey deck, but I do think there is more than just what's on the surface to this deck. There's a bunch of different layers. You can play some generic wing B stuff. You can play um, really, really cool cards that like not a lot of decks that are relevant to the metagame get to play. I'm talking about Pot of Duality in the main deck, uh, as well as uh, Prosperity and Extravagance. I'm also talking about... Um, like D Shifter, D Fisher, and Macro Cosmos. This deck does not care about the graveyard at all. So that's another thing to consider as well. Um, and I just think it's a really cool deck. So um, definitely looking forward to that. That easily makes it my number five slot. Number two, <sighs> Agents. Uh, this is a really, really cool deck. So if you don't know, well, I didn't even mention it before. Flunderies is coming out in Burst of Destiny. Whatever, it's the next core set for like two, a little over two months away from it. Not a big deal. Agents, though, is a little bit more tricky, and a couple of these are a little bit more tricky, okay? Agents is a structure deck in the OCG. Um, it just got a new one. It's part of their R series where they redo older structure decks and try to revamp them for the modern game. Really cool idea. I love what they're doing with it, and Agents is no exception. Um, this was an archetype that I liked for a long time. Even when I was younger, I loved, um, I loved like the idea of you know, Master Hyperion and, and the other Agent cards, even though they weren't nearly as good. I, Hyperion was good. The other ones weren't as good. Um, but now, with the new revamps, it's crazy. I mean, when you look at the new cards in the structure deck, you're literally like, that's a good card. That's a good card. That's a really good card. That's a good card. That's good. It's like every single card is going to be played in the deck. It's like crazy. Um, so I think when you really combine it all together, it's really strong. Also, this is kind of like a fairy good stuff kind of deck, which I tend to like, obviously with like the, the insect deck and some of the cyber decks I've played. Um, because one of those decks where you just have like Archlord Christia seems like it's going to have a really comfy home in this deck. You have stuff like Herald of Orange Light. That card might be banned by the time we get these cards. Who knows? And stuff like Ava as well, or Eva, to be able to search stuff like Orange Light out super easily via generic combos. So, uh, as well as uh, Diviner of the Herald as well, uh, being like a very powerful fairy card for this deck, uh, and, you know, uh, as well. So, it's just, I think it's in a great spot. I think it's actually going to be pretty good. I don't even tend to like combo decks that much, but this is one that I just have such a sweet spot for. I remember this structure from when I was a kid, and uh, the archetype's so cool. I've always loved the lore and the art and everything, so... Easily, easily, easily my number four slot, Agents. All right, sliding into the number three slot, Code Talkers. Now this one actually, you probably won't be surprised. Maybe you'll be surprised that it's not even higher on this list. But Code Talkers, and probably one of the decks I'm most known for on my channel. I, I did a good amount of Code Talker content a couple months ago. It did really well. Um, other than Layer of Darkness, this might be the second deck I'm actually known for on the channel, which is really funny. Um, but I really like this archetype. Unfortunately, I'm not a huge combo player, so I didn't stick to it as long as I would have liked, but I was also just kind of waiting for Decode Talker Heat Soul to come out, as well as Signet Optimization. That's more of a bonus card, but uh, not fully necessary, but uh, still would be nice to get. And that's pretty much what we're waiting on, right? We have all these cards. It's a really cool deck, but right now the deck has to play combo. Once we get Heat Soul, it can play control in a really, really cool way where you just draw hella cards for no reason. You make Heat Soul, you draw on your turn, you draw on your opponent's turn. 
So you're drawing two free cards. You're just pretty much playing a small condensed cybers package in the, in the build that I'm thinking of playing with a bunch of just like utility cards, hand traps, traps, just really strong generic cards that you just want to draw into and you just run away with advantage. It's crazy. You also have very strong power plays you can get into very quickly to just run games out with like access code talker and stuff like that. Um, so really, really cool. I'm excited. I'm really excited. The only problem is, here's the problem. We don't actually have a set confirmed yet for Deco Talker Heat Soul or Optimization. Um, it's one of those cards that it seems like Konami is just going to import it whenever they damn well feel like it. So it could be a core set as an OCG import. It could be a side set like Brothers Alleged. Who knows? But uh, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just a feeling I'm having that we're going to get it soonish. They've almost had it, what, two years longer than we have? Um, so we, we gotta get Deco Talker Heat Soul sooner than later. Um, we just got it, right? It just, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, easily, number three for me, Code Talkers. Oh, excuse me. Just drinking some water. <laughs> Which brings me to number two, Marine Cess. Um, this, <laughs> and guys, I know this is a stretch and I'm probably gonna get bashed for this, but this is my goddamn list. And I'm trying to talk this into existence. You guys know how I feel about Marine Cess. I've always been a fan of the deck, but the deck has been so close for so long. It just needed one or two cards and the deck could be like competitive if it were the right one or two cards. Well, we never got support after that. And now we're sitting in a position where we just had the next Duelist pack announced in the OCG. It is Duelist of the Abyss and it is water-based. So only water Duelist from the anime and manga getting picked. I think Owie is the single best option or the option that makes the most sense for Konami to end up throwing it in there. And it's the single archetype I want to see more than any. So it's just kind of lucky that it's turning out that way. I really hope they decide to throw her in there because if they do, this deck doesn't need seven cards, but damn it, it's going to get seven cards and that will be more than enough if any of the cards are like respectably decent in any way. So really really strong i just think the skeleton of this deck is already so solid the core of this deck is so good we just need those outside pieces just to like make the engine that we have be able to like get you good things so really really good i love it marine says is such a strong like pick to threat to end up in there i'm putting my money on it again i'm talking it into existence because if it doesn't end up there i'm gonna cry <laughs> i really am and so uh, yeah, it's got to be Marine Cess. I'm very excited to pick them up should they get any kind of support and uh, get to play them again. <sighs> please, Konami, please. <laughs> Marine Cess, number two. And number one on my top five most exciting decks upcoming in the game of Yu Gi Oh! This should be no surprise to anyone if you've just paid any kind of attention to the channel in the last week. It's B Troopers. It's gotta be B Troopers. This archetype is so cool. I've been having a really good time playing them. I'm not even really a combo player and this deck is pretty combo -y, but I think it's very unique in the way it wants to do everything. And it's also just utilizing cards that have just never, never been relevant. And it's so cool to finally see them have a home here. Um, like it just feels like insects have been like plants or zombies or one of those archetypes that like all the stuff that's the same type like just works together. It just never had a good archetype come out to really be played in it, right? Um, and whereas, like, in like plants got um, Sun Avalons eventually, or not Sun Avalons, that's just <laughs> so, <laughs> Sylvans, sorry. Um, and like zombies had obviously like the Mizuki stuff come out, and the Shiranui's were really good at one point, or solid at one point. And so they, they found homes, and this deck finally has a home. B Troopers are so cool, they really tie it all together really nicely. And the new, the first wave of support just came out recently in Dawn of Majesty. The next wave of support is already confirmed for Burst of Destiny. We have no idea what those cards are or what they're going to do or how good they're going to be. But the deck's already so set up. We have so many strong cards already. It doesn't need much. The deck just needs, in my opinion, a little bit of removal. Maybe one other good interruption. Like, the deck has access to an eruption. It's just like some of the interruptions aren't the best. You've got like impermanence esque interruptions. The counter trap is great, but sometimes retaliating C and contact C don't always work the best depending on the matchup. So some of your interruptions are like very matchup based. And so I don't want to just lose matchups because 
I've got stuff like that in my hand ending up and where I could be ending on just like a slightly better, like more generically uh, applicable interruption that's gonna hit more matchups. So that would be really nice as well. Um, and then other than that, it's just icing on the cake. Everything else we get from the support will just be really nice and, and nothing more. So um, I'm really excited for it. Also, you can't sleep on the fact that we're getting the new Insector spell in Grand Creators. I know that's not till January now because it's been pushed back almost a month and a half because of uh, COVID delays and, and stuff like that. What are you going to do? But I'm still excited for that. It's already been announced that that card is going to either summon an, an Insector monster straight out of the deck or equip an Insector straight out of the deck. And that is actually very, very interesting. I'm very curious to see where they go with that. They could give us access to a little bit more removal, being able to just like equip something like Hornet out of the deck to something, get a quick pop, not too shabby, or just summon stuff like Dragonfly or, or Centipede out of the deck for free and, and start to plus. Um, either way, it does make the Insector engine much more interesting to me because the deck, that those, those cards are like super hand trap uh, <laughs> fearing, like they just, they like one hand trap and th that engine just like dies. Um, because like just, it, it just has so many, anything's a choke point pretty much for them. So with this new card, it may just be a good enough extender. They'll be worth playing anyway, because you're going to raise the ceiling of your deck so much more. Uh, but anyway, B troopers, uh, really, really good. I think they're already like, a, a, a rogue deck right now that can compete with meta decks, especially the ones that has particularly really good matchups in. Virtual World's a little tough. You play a good Virtual World player, it's going to be a tough matchup, I promise you. But outside of that, a lot of the meta, almost all other meta relevant decks are like actually like pretty nice for this deck to face. Uh, it does have some really, really strong um, attributes to be able to take those decks on. So easily, number one for me, B Troopers, but that's my top five, all right? Real quick, one more time, Flunderies, represented by the Ryza, the Spanish Ryza. Agents, represented by the Agent of Mystery Earth. Code Talkers, represented by Microcoder, Marine Cess, represented by Marine Cess Blue Tang, and of course, uh, Blue, uh, Bee Troopers or Insect Good Stuff, represented by Bee Trooper Sting Lancer. So these are the five decks I am most excited for upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh! You know I'm going to build all of these and have profiles and have hand videos and, and maybe even some live duels. I do want to get more into doing stuff like live duel videos for you guys. Um, but these are so good. I'm very excited for all of these to come out. And hopefully it's sooner rather than later. But that's going to do it for me here today, guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. Of course, do not forget, put your list in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching as always. I will see you in the next one. And peace.